welcome to St. James Catholic Church. If you're visiting with us, we want to give you a special welcome. We are honored by your presence and your participation as we worship together. May we stand and sing, please, our opening hymn, number 604, Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth.
let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praise for this service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I read it from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your life all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and have a long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that they may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O oh, Lord, my rock, my fortress, my Savior. I love you, My God, my rock, where I take refuge, my shield, my saving strength, my stronghold, I cry out, praise be the Lord, and see I am saved from my foes. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you, Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, 
he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. I think we can all agree that at times Jesus really was just kind of a total boss. I mean, he was in charge. And um, last year around this time, I referred to that huge mosaic in uh, the Basilica in Washington, D.C., when Jesus is there flexing, and I, called, I referred to him as the Bowflex Jesus, and I really still hold truthfully to that. Because nobody ever put Jesus in his place. First of all, that's because he was God. But second, because he was always right. And he knew it. He quite simply, just, quite simply just kind of exuded confidence. He was witty, sharp as a tack, calm, cool, and collected. He had everything one needs in order to put his naysayers in their place. Hey, how come your disciples don't fast, they would ask. Or, oh, no, you didn't. Did you just heal a withered man's hand on the Sabbath? No. I wonder why he eats with sinners and prostitutes. This guy is out of his mind. They were all saying it was circulating about. But none of that fazed Jesus. And sadly, the profound responses he gave to those questions didn't really faze those who asked them. Which brings us to today's gospel. Because here there's something extraordinary going on. We have a genuine exchange, a legitimate question. We have a scribe who's not trying to trip Jesus up. He's trying to learn something. 
He's trying to figure all this out. So as a scribe, he's a scholar of the law. He's trying to get a grip on this massive law that the Jews were to follow. There were 365 prohibitions. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And 248 positive commandments. You shall do this, you shall do this, you shall do this. And the question the scribe was trying to get at was, what's behind all of that? How can I make any sense of it? What's the goal? Why am I doing all of this? He was surely asking. And so he asked Jesus quite genuinely, what's the first of all of these 613 commandments? How in the world can I or any of us make any sense of all this? Well, nobody else really could answer that question authoritatively except God. And frankly, Jesus was this guy who was going around healing everyone. He was raising people from the dead. So at this point, he, is, he had pretty well established him as an authority who could ask the question. Of the 613 commandments, which of those is the greatest? So Jesus does something that had never been done. He takes two of those 613 commandments from different places in the Torah, and he puts them together. So he takes the first one from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And he plucks another commandment from just this random verse in the middle of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, and he says, you shall love the neighbor as yourself. So he takes these two seemingly disconnected commandments, and he brings them together and says, and says these two are the greatest and they're the ones that form sort of the lens, the filter, through which you should interpret all of the other 611. It's really quite appropriate that Jesus, who himself unites the divine and human, should give two commandments that compel us to love the divine and human, to love God and man. You can just hear the scribes saying in response to Jesus bringing those two commandments together. You can just hear the, the scribes saying, oh, you're right. Loving God and your neighbor are worth more than burnt offerings and sacrifices. That makes sense. Finally, in this scribe, Jesus had converted someone because he hadn't done a very good job with any of the other scribes and Pharisees up to that point. So Jesus had converted a heart, which is that's great, but there's something far deeper going on than a mere conversion of the heart of one scribe. To get to the bottom of that, let's put this exchange between Jesus and the scribe into the proper context. So many of those 613 commandments were related to the temple. That was the temple that stood there in Jerusalem where the Jews were to go and they were to offer sacrifices. And just before this interaction with Jesus, in the 11th chapter of Mark, Jesus, being the boss that he was, marched into that temple turned the tables over, he threw those who were selling animals and fruit and other sorts of things, he kicked them out, he cleansed the temple. He said, you all get out of here, this is the house of prayer. You shouldn't be in here. When Jesus did that, he was in a way implicitly tearing down the temple. He was telling them, this building, this temple is no longer necessary. I will be the new temple. And the sacrifices that you all are offering in this temple, I'm going to take the place of those by offering my very self. And we know the, the temple was actually destroyed 40 years after that, but at that point, Jesus really was implicitly tearing it down. And we heard this in the second reading, where St. Paul told us Jesus has no need, no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day. Jesus did that once for all when he offered himself. So, the temple was destroyed in the year 70 AD. We don't need it anymore. It's gone. It's a thing of the past. But we do need something to take its place. And that's where the church comes in. So the old temple is gone, and all the six, many of the 613 laws that went with it, they're gone. And now a new one has been erected with Jesus as its cornerstone, a new temple, which we know to be the church. And in this church, in this temple... Just like the old temple, we have a number of laws and commandments that we have to follow. And these laws in the modern day temple, the church, are rooted likewise in the double commandment to love God and neighbor.
So while we may question some of the church's laws, we may wonder where in the world they came from, we may ponder why we're clinging to these seemingly antiquated traditions, we have to believe that all of that is in place to make us better, to help us grow in virtue and holiness so that we can go out and we can love in the way that our cornerstone, Jesus Christ, has commanded us. So if we're faithful, if we're faithful to following God's law, which he's given to us through the church, through the new temple, then the day will come when we can say and truly mean in the, to the very depths of our heart and soul what we just sang in the responsorial psalm. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Praised be Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, the eternal high priest, leads all people in mercy, gathers us all in unity, and comforts all who suffer with the balm of compassion. To our Heavenly Father, let us now bring our petitions. For peace in the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of Christ, and for the salvation of souls, let us pray for our beloved dead and the holy souls in purgatory, in particular, Tom Lynch, whose funeral we celebrated today. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray that the Lord give us the grace to follow his commandments faithfully and humbly. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our president and for all those who lead the nations of the world, let us pray for peace in our nation, world, commonwealth, and our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirmed, and for those who care for them, for the grieving, the sick and suffering, and the poor, oppressed, and unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all children born and unborn, for parents and all families, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our brothers and sisters at St. Mark's Parish in Haiti, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, our Father, in humble petition, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 700. 
where charity and love prevail, 700. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sartus, Sartus, Sartus Dominus Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you, and your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, Jerry, good job. I just go join the others. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May we stand as we sing our communion hymn, number 945, Taste and See, 945. God's name.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, the Knights of Columbus <clears throat> uh, annual All Souls Remembrance service will be tomorrow over at uh, St. James Cemetery at 2 p.m. I would encourage you to uh, attend that if you can to pay your respects. Again, that's tomorrow, right over here at our cemetery at 2 p.m. And tomorrow evening, the uh, St. James Choir will be performing Mozart's Vespers Solanelle, uh, which uh, will include a string quartet. Uh, will, it will be a benefit concert to benefit uh, St. Vincent de Paul. Um, it's uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. It's, it's free and open to all, but there will be uh, a free will offering to go to support all the good work that uh, St. Vincent de Paul does. So if you're free tomorrow, here in the church at 7 p.m. I'm sure it will be beautiful. You can check that out. And again, CSA is ongoing. As Father Martin has written here, if not yet, please just do it. Envelopes are by the doors, archlew.org. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our going forth hymn is number 611, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, 611. Just see.